I'm at the edge of rock bottom in real life and in the SpongeBob adventure map in Minecraft. Yoink! Down I... Really? You can't wait. Hold on. You can't go down there? Seriously? Wow. They don't even let you go down there. So this is going to be me taking a behind the scenes look at the SpongeBob adventure map. A lot of people probably curious, like, how does the map work? And what are these things? And is it like, you know, what's it, what's it all like? So now I like doing this for all the different adventure maps that I buy because I like seeing how they're made, to be honest with you. So if I go down toward here in creative mode, it automatically teleports me back over to here. So some of these blocks have like sand. This is cyan terracotta. Uh, this thing right here is a boat mobile spawn. So it's literally an egg that you can spawn in different colors and they just randomly do red or blue or orange, most likely, if you just keep spawning them in. So that's kind of cool. Or it's just red, actually. But what I was curious about was the kelp forest because every character is now stuck over there on the, uh, the, the Goo Lagoon. So they don't actually go anywhere else. They just stay there. SpongeBob never follows you ever again or anything like that. So I'm like, man, is there anything else in the kelp forest that I missed? Is there anything over on the sides that I missed? And just give you more of a detailed look before you buy this for yourself, if you want to. So you can race the, the course here as a boat. And I really like the F5 view for this. So going across this, I was hoping that there was going to be some obstacle or time trial or something here. Not that it would be overly difficult and you could actually cheese it super like really, really easily because you could just run through everything here. Uh, the boat really operates like a horse, except it actually collides with stuff. So me going over these things right here, it really slows me down substantially. So that's pretty cool. So hoping there was a time trial thing, but that's okay. I really love these uh, fencing details over here. So let me take a look at this. If we walk up to it and press the middle click button, you'll see that it's technically orange glass, uh, stained glass pane that is technically yellow. So if you rendered this in with just a normal Minecraft texture pack, you would see all this be looking real weird. Uh, some of it would make sense, some of it wouldn't. Dark Prismarine over there. So I don't know if you can use the SpongeBob texture pack in your own worlds, but you know, if you really wanted to, I guess you could. Weenie Hut Juniors is accessible though. Give me a Sunday here, buddy. Hey man, what's going on? Oh, <laughs> edit the raw text. So what? what is he supposed to say? Oh, so it loads in like whatever dialogue they decree he's supposed to. Interesting. So if I switch over to adventure mode, you'll see he says, I'm having the best day ever. What about you? So they probably program the different phrases, not in Minecraft itself, but inside of a, um, a different program. Can I switch game modes here? No, I can't. I can't. You're supposed to press F3 and F4. Nope. To switch between different game modes pretty easily. So we can't get into the, uh, the actual thing here, but there's nothing inside of here. So <laughs> it's not like that's a, uh, an inaccessible area. It'll just boot you outside here and be like, yeah, you're not tough enough, brother. I do like that they bump you out like that. That's kind of cool. Like it launches you backward. That's really nice. Interesting. How about if I head over toward here? This is Mrs. Puff's house, right? Yeah. Obviously can't go inside of here. There's nothing inside of here. So there's some cool details on the outside. What is this? This is a... You normally go to the bottom. So any of these custom molded, custom molded, like it's a Lego set. Any of these custom created assets, like you can, you know, oh, it's like different types of signs. Cool. So toward the bottom is where you can get the spawn egg for those typically. Uh, nothing is obviously inside of here. It's actually hollow as well. Cool. So instead of it being glass, it actually uses uh, ice back here, packed ice to give that effect. So. I guess you could get a really cool texture pack out of this map as well. Um, because, I mean, it all looks pretty usable here. I can't see what uh, where the item is for the Weenie Hut Jr. sign, but that's a custom text image. That's pretty sweet. So we have Baron Marts around here. I really like the sculpting on these flowers because you obviously see them all throughout here, right? But it's cool that they actually sculpted them into the world itself. So... SpongeBob's house, I guarantee you, you don't actually go inside of. You get teleported into a new area, which you can find SpongeBob's house, right? Yep, so SpongeBob's house is technically hollow on the outside. And if we go into SpongeBob's house for real, get teleported. Let's see where this is, actually. This is, oh, well, it's all one continuous building, obviously. 
But if you go outside of here, there is what's called a black box, which means uh, you can't see on the outside of it. And it looks like all the interiors for all the different buildings are right over here, which is really snazzy. This is Squidward's house, most likely. Yep, that's exactly what that is. We head over toward here. This is the inside of the chum bucket. Uh, inside of the chum bucket as well. Yeah, no, wait, what's this? What's this? This is a meeting room? That's cool. All right, well, there's that. How about if we go over to here? What's this? This is the movie theater, cool. So all of these are in one contained area. And I do want to see what's on the outside of the black box. Uh, they use this a lot in game development to uh, put a particular area where they want to. And uh, they usually test a lot of things around here as well. So you can see that this is a test area for what looks like what could be the movie theater or something. So you're not actually supposed to get access into this area at any given point. It's just here for the sake of testing interiors and how it would go but I like that they actually formatted it like this so you could actually see if you really wanted to. Uh, there's no lighting inside of here and whatnot. This kind of looks like what SpongeBob's house would be, except it's way bigger. So maybe they were looking at the scale of what the SpongeBob house was supposed to be. Like that looks like a chair, right? So maybe it was supposed to be way bigger in the very beginning, but then they made it a little bit smaller to better fit the, the models of the characters, which is really cool. This building looks like it's fairly finished. So this, Oh, you can go inside Mrs. Puff's boating school. Oh, I didn't know you could go inside. Well, that's cool. So because there's a black box on the outside, they use the glass effect here to make it look like there's something outside, even though there's not. Well, you can go inside of Mrs. Puff's boating school. That's pretty sweet. Custom item here is a chair. So you can place these however you want to, and they kind of behave like animals in a weird way. Uh, barrier blocks are all throughout here. Uh, this is a custom molded thing spawning in the teacher school desk so that's how minecraft development actually works where you have to like have things on spawn eggs and put them in instead of how you might think that is now actually before i continue let's see what it looks like on the outside if i head out over toward here there is nothing look at that so i'll find out where this area actually is i could probably turn on coordinates and find that out but if I head over toward here, normally you can see the shadow boxes like kind of right on the outskirts, but maybe not in this case here. Maybe this is super far from where the spawn actually is. Cool. And they probably used uh, these here because these are different chunks in Minecraft. So if I head over toward here, it'll pop me right back over to where Bikini Bottom itself is. Cool. So I'm gonna head over toward the Kelp Forest actually because I don't know what's in the kelp forest. We never go there as part of the story or anything like that. It just seems like a, a maybe a parkour adventure map sort of deal. Uh, is there any way to get inside of Sandy's house? That's actually something I wanted to do. Yeah, you can. Look at that. And it just teleports you inside of here. There's no specific area for it because you're just... Uh... Oh, this works. Whoa, that's cool. That's very cool. I love that. Wow, very cool. Hats off to the developers for that one. That's very cool that they animated all that stuff there. And you can kind of sort of get inside here, but there's actually no way to access it. So like, let's say I, let's say these block more, blocks weren't broken. There's no way to get inside of there. Huh, okay. So a little bit of an interior, but nothing too crazy. I, I love that that thing works. And I also love that like all the benches and stuff work too always wanted that in actual Minecraft, and I'm glad the development team took the extra time to make that happen. Uh, something I do find questionable is a massive drop-off here to Kelp Forest. Like, that's very bizarre why that is the way it is. So if we take a look, uh, you see that there's this aura that goes around the whole thing, so that's pretty snazzy. You can't just uh, loom right over it and see it all in one go. Uh, oh, what's that? What's this? If I go into uh, adventure mode here, this looks like a a launcher for the uh, the Krabby Patties. The burger launcher you can defend use it to defend the Krusty Krab. Oh, so it looks like a giant weapon for multiple burgers or multiple levels of hunger in one go. That's cool. That's a cool reward for that. I like that a lot. Okay. So it is worthwhile to go through the kelp forest. And maybe Mr. Krabs actually told me that, but I didn't remember. So 
That's spicy. And I did not see this lower area down here. This is really cool. Huh. So maybe there's even more weapons hidden inside of here that I don't know about. Or there's nothing. You never know. Looks like that kind of goes into the Minecraft terrain development here. Looks like there could also be some sort of enemies that you could defeat down here, but uh, so, so far there's nothing. And switching between adventure mode and creative mode doesn't really change anything in terms of how the map works. So that's spicy. Uh, I am gonna hover back on out of here, but that's really cool. Item is locked and can't be dropped. So some things, hey, you just can't drop. You can drop the spawn eggs and the sand and all that stuff. You can drop that, but you cannot drop the map and all that. So that's another interesting fun fact there. So I've headed over toward Glove World and all that. I guess I'll go take a look at that once again. But before I do that, I want to go on the exterior of where this is. So you can see this is actually beautifully molded over here. Everything using World Edit or whatever computer generated software they use. This is beautiful. I would also be keen to see if there were secrets hidden throughout here. Probably not. Like, oh, you're not supposed to be here. But I know if I were making a Minecraft map, I would want to like hide little Easter eggs and stuff all throughout here, like back toward here. There's like, I don't know, something going on. But maybe because they're working with Nickelodeon, they can't do stuff like that. I don't really know. But if we take a look on the outside of here, we see that there's nothing. So you can see the edges of the world. That's what, you know, it, wor it works like. So they probably made the entirety of the, the terraforming and stuff on the generator or custom software to do that. I doubt they used World Edit in Minecraft to make that happen because that would be a massive pain in the butt to do. But sometimes, like independent developers, they do that. And I would also assume that you would get some access to some unique software if you're making an official Minecraft map to be on the marketplace or like a part of a collaboration like this. So, you know, if anybody ends up watching this from the development team, I'd love to know like the process of all this stuff. I find it, su I find it very interesting. All this stuff is super spicy to me, just how things work and how they, they do certain things and don't do certain things, you know? It gives a nice behind the scenes for everybody uh, listening and watching. Got the, the glove, the gloves there, the bumper decks or bumper cars here rather. So you could obviously go inside of these, but you know, not really bumper cars because they all overlap with each other, but that's totally fine. Can't ride things like this because that would be way too tough to program, but I totally get it. Got a Ferris wheel. The, the ice cream car, lots of little huts where things could happen. And then obviously the main attraction is the roller coaster, which is very cool in of itself. Again, barrier blocks and all that are surrounding that area. But being in creative mode definitely helps. So if you wanted to, I'm sure you could go wherever you wanted to and bypass. Actually, you can't really bypass certain areas because it's just the, the, the way it works. So that's cool. Now, Glove World is over there. Parking lot, all that chum bucket. Is there nothing inside the chum bucket? Really, nothing at all. Let me take a let me take a look inside here. Nothing. Look at that. Cool. But going inside the actual crusty crab is totally something you can do because it's all one big giant building. Actually, getting the high score on this would be pretty snazzy. So can't open any of that. But you know what I'm gonna do actually because I'm bored is I'm gonna show me getting from like level zero. I got to level seven before. I'm gonna see if I can get a higher score and skip ahead a little bit. I'm not gonna cheat using adventure mode, but I am gonna use this thing, the Krabby Patty Launcher, and see how far I can get in uh, in this thing here. So let me get the clarinet and everything else out here and see how far I can get with uh, this, this mini game here, right? Hey, Mr. Krabs, actually, no, I have to actually switch back into adventure mode because Mr. Krabs can't actually say anything. Let's go, I'll see you at level seven and beyond. Okay, so wave number seven is here, and yes, this does work exactly like I thought it did, except for it doing more Krabby Patty damage. It doesn't. It actually does splash damage like this, but it doesn't do, like, multiple Krabby Patties at a time, so it works really well for this specific purpose, actually. Like, doing a bunch of this, but other than that... I mean, actually, yeah, this does work really nicely. Like, see, Bubba Bass is gone. I already have a much higher score than before. You can see that, like, I'm serving up these patties here, and it's working out really nicely. So, like, these two work out well. Um, yeah, the splash damage is where this really goes into, like, massive full effect here. And otherwise, yeah, getting more precise aim is going to be more difficult, but, like, it's still possible. So, yeah, cash register at full integrity, which is super cool. 
And as the levels go on, you get more of the resources to pop out of here in case you want to. But what's good is that by you launching the splash damage here, it works out because lots of these uh, fishies get impacted here. So you can really just like spam them and they, they kind of get set back a little bit. So right here is the funnel. And if they get past here, then you're kind of in trouble. But you can see just how much money I'm getting here by doing this. Uh, it also looks like it, they don't give you any more of the, the launchers, like the, the launchers that launch down onto the table here or whatever. So that's a little uh, problematic. I'm going to toss these here. But yeah, especially the ones that take one Krabby Patty. They're good for like satisfying as customers, but then they're going to get out of here and then you can impact more splash damage uh, that way. So that's cool. These obviously maintain the social distance a little bit here. I'm going to divert customers a little bit because they're going to be all mad. All right. Yeah, they're not giving me any more... Uh, patties to launch with like ground defenses so that's a little again problematic there if you go in order it's actually really nice and yeah if you want to get like a super high score this is also super helpful i'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this but yeah refilling these is actually a massive pain and yeah i don't know if i'll get to level 10 this is tough if i can make a thousand dollars extra thousand dollars right here that would be stellar pop these bad Larry's over to here yeah doing a thousand that might be tough this might be very tough I just I just got to keep doing this got to keep trying all right and they're not going to go after the cash register or they might actually just kidding uh-huh I'm so close to a stack give me a fat stack of cash right here please get away from squiddy get away from squiddy he's just doing his job come on get on out of here man Level 10. Oh boy, here we go. And Bubble Bass is back. Cool. Uh, do I have... I don't have any more defenses, man. I really don't. Ouch. Come on. Actually, play the annoying mu musical instrument. Come on. Divert the guests. Divert them. Divert them. No, it's not diverting more of them. No. Okay. Bubble Bass is going to be a big Bubba problem. Okay. Especially, oh, with the 50%. No, I'm so close to a thousand. I've made a thousand dollars. I'm good. I'm good. I made a thousand. New high score of a thousand bucks. I'll take it, man. If you can get higher score than 1,015, that is absolutely good for you. Good for you. But I don't know if I'm going to get any higher than that for sure. That's tough. You might have to have multiple players. That's where you're really going to succeed with that. If you're just by yourself, man, that's going to be a tough time. But hey. The SpongeBob Adventure Map has been excellent. The hydrodrum, Hydrodynamic Spatula, Clarinet, Krabby Patty Tray, and the Launcher have been wonderful. This map has been wonderful. I highly recommend it. No bugs, no anything like that. Celebrating Bikini Bottom with the SpongeBob crew is awesome. And this is a lovely homage to Minecraft and SpongeBob being together. I highly recommend this, picking it up. I think it's $8 on the marketplace. Yeah, do so, especially with the amount of love that the characters have here. I would have loved if this map were like $20, make it action packed, more boss battles, especially with like the King Jellyfish. You have another storyline, maybe with Squilliam or something involving Goo Lagoon a bit more. Maybe the, the parkour section could have been Goo Lagoon because that's like an adventure style, how it was in, uh, you know, Rehydrated. But otherwise, this is great. I highly recommend it, and I can't wait to play more Minecraft uh, maps in the future. Until then, stay spicy, spry, and I'll see you next time, all right? Bye.